This is the left rear portion of my yard and the northwest direction of my garden. And all winter long, I let the leaves from the trees lay here to keep the ground covered, keep it moist and protected. But now that it's spring, it's time to rake them up. We had a large section of wood stockade fence that had come apart and rotted out so we took it down and these are some of the posts that were used to hold it up. I'm saving those to use in the garden but now I have to lug them out of this spot so I can rake underneath them. My plan is to use them to hold up my cattle panels, lay them in little trenches in the ground and then snug up the bottom of my cattle panels against them to hold them straight. I am challenged with a lot of vining weeds in my yard. The worst of all is the poison ivy and we'll get to that later. But all through the backyard I have English ivy and Virginia creeper and a few other unidentifiable ivies and vines that I have to dig down and pull up the roots to get them out of there. At this point, I had already filled five of those big Ace Garden paper bags full of these weeds, these vines that I'm putting out to the road to get rid of. They will not go in my compost. Isn't it amazing how vines weave their way in and out of fences like they had a brain? I just don't understand how that happens. After the weeds are pulled and before the beds are planted, I will cover the beds with a nice layer of my homemade compost, which will further help feed the soil and hold moisture. Here in Zone 7A Maryland, we have pretty mild winters. And that means in the early spring, we get early spring weeds. And most of them, are easy to take out. I'm glad that they're there because they cover the soil and keep it moist and protected. And in the early spring before I plant, I just gently pull them out. I don't want to till my gardens because that interconnective network of mycelium growth that uh, helps build good soil shouldn't be disturbed. So I just disturbed the top layer where I remove the weeds and get it ready for planting.
This is the area left of my veggie garden right next to the chain link fence that divides our two properties with my neighbor. And this is the danger zone because poison ivy wants to grow here. Right now all I see is English ivy and maybe some Virginia creeper, but I know lurking underneath in these roots is poison ivy going everywhere. I've dealt with this poison ivy for years and my husband and I and several of our children have broken out with bad cases, needing steroids. We are very, very allergic to it. So I have tried to deal with it with uh, putting plastic down to suffocate it, using the vinegar and Dawn dish liquid spray, all the different remedies that YouTubers have offered. And this year I'm going a different route. And I'll be sharing that plan with you very soon in an upcoming video when I show you exactly what I'm doing about that poison ivy. Now I'm back in the beds under the hoops. The uh, cukes and melons and squash will grow over the hoops, but under the hoops I'll be growing collards and kale and Swiss chard and things like that here. years ago I laid down fresh wood chips on this path between the garden beds. Now that they've decomposed sufficiently I am shoveling those decomposed wood chips up on top of the beds to become part of the soil again. All those nice nutrients and microbacteria that have broken down in these wood chips will now feed the soil on the beds. And I will refill this path with new wood chips and start the process all over again in another one or two years. The ashy gray color you see in these wood chips is the mycelium breaking down and providing lots of nice mic microbacteria for my soil. This is the end of my garden right next to my screen porch and it's the last bit I need to clear. I had this black plastic laid out in the past to uh, smother the poison ivy. It did an okay job for a while but not great. Now I'm going to just fold it up and put it away and I'm going to clear the weeds out of this area. I, ha I do have a little bit of a, a strawberry patch here that I will leave and I'm going to cover this area with wood chips, at least half of it, the part way back by the wood fence, and let that rest. I've had all kinds of bad weeds coming up here with strong roots. I call them iron weed. I don't know if it's Bermuda grass or what it is, but it's very difficult to get rid of with deep roots that are hard to pull out. I'm providing this narrative during my working in the garden to help those people who are uh, site challenged. I have several blind people that watch my videos and say they appreciate it when I include a description of what I'm doing. So here I'm back by that fence and I'm cutting all the stems and woody weeds that are coming up. I need to get them out of there before I can lay any wood chips down. And there's also some remnants of sassafras tree saplings and things like that. Next, to help with weed control, I'm going to first lay down big sheets of cardboard over this area 
that the mulch will go on top of, wood chip mulch. So I'm splitting open these big cardboard boxes and I'm going to lay them end to end, overlapping them so they have a nice ground cover. These will eventually just decompose along with the wood chips, actually contributing to the soil. And here's another big box. Put that open, lay, oh, no, this one's a TV. I don't know what that other one was. Yep, we'll just overlap them and we'll cover these with wood chips. This giant pile of wood chips came from our neighbor's yard when he took down a maple tree two years ago. And we asked if we could have the wood chips and he agreed. So now I have this two year old pile of wood chips that we will use to spread around my gardens to use as mulch. So I filled up the wheelbarrow and I'm taking it down to the end of the porch where the cardboard is. We'll dump the load onto the cardboard. Spread it out. Now, lucky for me, my husband continued this for me. He filled up that wheelbarrow about 10 more times and filled in this area for me. I'm not going to take that credit. Thank you, honey. Be watching for my next video when I'll show you how I planted all these beds out and how my garden is growing and my espaliered fruit tree orchard. See you then!